Welcome to the Ecom Breakthrough Podcast. Are you ready to unlock the full potential and growth in your business? You've already crossed seven figures in sales, but the challenge is knowing how to take your business to the next level. Join Josh Hadley, an eight-figure e-com business owner and investor, as he interviews highly successful business owners. Get ready, because you're going to learn specific actions you can take today to help your business reach its full potential and leave a lasting impact on the world. Welcome to the Ecom Breakthrough Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Hadley, where I interview the top business leaders in e-commerce. Past guests include Adam Heist, Kevin King, and Michael E. Gerber, the author of The E-Myth. Today, I'm speaking with Isabella Ritz, a serial entrepreneur and Amazon seller and the CEO of Ritz Momentum. And we are going to be talking a lot about the importance of product research and validation to help scale your brand to eight figures and beyond. This episode is brought to you by Ecom Breakthrough Consulting, where I help seven-figure companies grow to eight figures and beyond. Listen, Isabella, I started my business back in 2015 and grew it to an eight-figure brand in seven years, but I made a lot of mistakes along the way that made the path of getting to eight figures take a lot longer than it needed to. I certainly made a lot of mistakes as it, as it relates to launching new products, probably not validating them enough making a lot of hiring mistakes or not knowing the roles that I needed to hire for in order to grow my brand and take it to the next level. And so to all of our listeners, those of you who have hit similar plateaus and want to learn from my experiences and know how to take your brand to the next level, then go to ecombreakthrough.com. That's ecom with two M's to learn more. And as a special bonus to my podcast listeners, this month I'm giving away one $10,000 comprehensive business strategy audit session at no cost. All you need to do is email me at josh at ecombreakthrough.com and in your subject line, say strategy audit and then plead your case as to why I should choose you and your business to work with for this month. But I am super excited to introduce you all to Isabella. I've met her numerous times. Um, Isabella immigrated from Russia in 2015 with her three children. She is a serial entrepreneur since the age of 17. She has created and sold multiple businesses where she developed e-commerce, SEO, and digital marketing expertise to grow any online business. Isabella also serves as the CEO of Ritz Momentum, a company that she founded in 2019 to provide services for the students whom she was teaching how to sell on Amazon. She saw that they led extremely busy lives and wanted to help them bring their vision of starting an Amazon business to life, just as she had in 2015. Today, Ritz Momentum is your one-stop shop for Amazon business services. From the heavy lifting of finding and creating a product, um, for you to sell on Amazon to optimizing your Amazon listings, PPC campaigns. Her agency has grown to provide anything a new or experienced seller needs to scale their business. So with that introduction, welcome to the show, Isabella. Thank you for having me. Great intro. I was listening and didn't feel that it's about me, but sounds <laughs> like truth. <laughs> I love it. Well, you've got a lot of experience, Isabella. You have certainly been around the block. You've seen how Amazon has changed uh, over the last decade for sure. And there's been a lot of changes that have happened. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited for our listeners because they're talking to a very experienced seller. You're not a guru trying to pitch another course or how to get rich fast on Amazon. You are actually providing, um, you know, you're an actual seller yourself. You're providing a service, which in my opinion, is one of the most essential aspects that any business needs in order to grow. And so that's kind of where I want to start this podcast, Isabella, is focusing on the number one growth lever in any online e-commerce business is launching new products, period. That is your fastest lever to grow your brand, to take it to the next level, is coming out with new products, expanding your product line. So, Isabella, I would love to hear from your standpoint, why did you create Ritz Momentum and why is it so important to be coming out with new products on a regular basis for a seven-figure seller? I believe every single point you just mentioned is just different podcasts, but I will try to make this long story short. So it's a great point about gurus uh, making promises to start your Amazon and grow it fast. Generally speaking, if you want to grow your Amazon fast, do it slow. 
So, and your, your speed is in your uh, basic, pretty much like if, if you, if you're going to, if you're going to slow down yourself and you will focus on the numbers and you will validate your products with the numbers, this is where you're actually speeding yourself up. Because we have the main components when you are choosing the product. Well, first of all, main components to succeed is like to have a great product, to have a traffic uh, that will convert your product. So and you have marketing, right? So if you have a great product, you have to make sure you target your audience and the, the audience you are targeting is ready to purchase your product. Sometimes your buyers, they're searching for the product, but when they're finding the product, they don't understand if this product is relevant and actually uh, meeting their pain points. So for example, if I'm searching for the, I don't know, let's say Tumblr, am I searching for 20 ounces Tumblr or I'm searching for the Tumblr that will keep my drink cold while I'm walking the dog? Or maybe I'm searching for the tumbler that will keep my drink warm while I am, uh, I don't know, walking in the winter somewhere in the mountains, right? And I'm, I'm going on a hike and et cetera. So people are, sellers are forgetting to uh, communicate the experience of the product. So this is the conversion. And then another part is the traffic when we are talking about actual people in the store. So you have to have people in the doors, uh, relevant people, your target audience. And given how Amazon works, especially uh, it's still kind of rumors, but it's not really rumors. So Amazon uh more and more targeting people with um, like based on the interest. So if you, for example, I don't know, dog mom or a uh, new homeowner or you just moved or like your military and etc., Amazon will be targeting you with the products that are based on your interest. I didn't see anywhere it's official. I am not, I'm not just saying this is how it's happening in Amazon providing you products that you are like based on your interest. And if you are subscribed as the buyer to Amazon newsletters, then you will be seeing the next thing. So, for example, if you've been searching for the, I don't know, paper cup or like party decorations yesterday and you got this email into your inbox yesterday, Amazon sent you into your inbox the offers compare it to the one that you've been searching for. And then, for example, you didn't open this email that day and you opened this email like in two days from today and by uh, like after tomorrow, you've been searching for something else. So, for example, for the dog leash. When you will open this email with the offers from Amazon, you will be able to see not the paper cups for the decorations or pop party supplies, you will be seeing their offers from Amazon for the dog leash. So Amazon is targeting you with the interest that you are having at the time, and they're chasing you down with the similar products, especially if those are having limited deals or whatever, whatever. So I hope you guys got it, what is going on on Amazon side right now. And uh, I'm really looking forward to Amazon release this feature by saying like, listen, this is what about to happen. And when I was talking to Kevin King, that was also on your podcast, he was mentioning that uh, Amazon is about to release uh, the feature where um, but the moment people are searching for the product in the search bar, uh, we will be able to see the uh, actual pictures of the product under the search bar before we will be able to see the actual results on the page. And my assumption, this is where sellers will be starting fighting for the page, uh, not just for the page one, but to be in this results, in the suggested results. So to the point, where we're validating the product and we're thinking about the conversion. We have to remember what Perry Belcher said. And he's saying people are buying pictures. So now you are, as a seller, you are buying, you have to sell the picture in the picture. So now we have to make sure our picture is communicating to the seller, to the buyer. My gosh, I'm seller buyer you guys got it so our picture as a seller is communicating to the buyer so much where the moment they see your picture they already excited now they have to learn more and everything you supposed to be to do as a seller is to communicate with them your product to make sure they understand 
that everything they're searching for is contains and like you're providing with your product on your page. And when Josh was uh, speaking at the um, uh, BDSS in 2021, I believe, 2022, 2021. So it was in the past. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, this is where you can, pr in the in a, uh, side of like add to cart, you can provide uh, additional products instead of like warranties and something else. So you can add it to the right side of your listing. And this is where you're also upselling your product to the client. So, and this is the, pretty much the combination, in my personal perspective, that's the great formula for uh, your products to be successful where you have a product that be, that is being communicated super good from the page one, the picture number one, like the, the one that is in a white background. And sometimes you have the opportunity to add uh, the background with the interior. If uh, based on Amazon perspective, they will, uh, they will uh, accept, uh, accept your request uh, to sell your, their, your product uh, using the interior or exterior, whatever you need, because you will tell, like, I need to show this product uh, in the specific use, and Amazon might accept you to do that. So the point is, if you're communicating well from the picture number one to the picture number two, by the time your client will be at the picture number three, they pretty much already made a decision to purchase. You just have to push it all the way to the edge. And then when they're adding to the cart, based on the Josh advice, you are adding more products because they are they supposed to be relevant. Like, for example, if it's a cup, uh, paper cup, listen, here is the cup holder. So make sure you're not burning your hands. So now it's a very easy upsell. Now you're not selling one, one thing, you're selling two of them. So the moment you are choosing the product and you're validating the product, you have to immediately think how you're going to process the conversion because the conversion is something that is actually making your sales and you can, uh, you don't have to spend money on PPC for your extra additional products. You can just upsell them on spot on the right side. Um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the first part. <laughs> I love that. No, it, it makes a lot of sense. And so, Isabella, I'd be curious to hear your perspective for our listeners that are primarily seven figure Amazon sellers. Um, some of them may be struggling with knowing what type of products to launch next, right? Or, you know, how do I expand my product line? So based on the experience that you've had working with a lot of different clients, what recommendations would you give to a seven figure Amazon seller that wants to expand their product line, but they don't really know where to begin? Uh, great question. Uh, we are having a lot of seven and eight figure sellers that are coming and saying, listen, I was lucky in the past. And I know that I was lucky and I am pushing eight, seven figures and I have several brands and all of the performance. Great. I don't know what to do next. And initially when we got first client like this, I was, I was confused. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what to do? Like you're selling for a while. You're already like supposed to be a guru. But because a lot, of, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, we saw Amazon changes. And when you launched Amazon in 2015, 2012, and like, let's say up to 2017, you did a lot of things just based on your intuition. It was, We didn't calculate many things. We did not validate many things. We've been just launching and launching and launching and launching. So that was not thoughtful experience, but that was successful experience for a lot of sellers and that's why they were not uh, they, they they weren't they didn't learn in the past how to validate the products mm -hmm. and now they are at the place where they are some of them are having teams that are actually um providing them a lot of like the list of the products and the problem of this list that some of the lists sellers are creating for example six months ago or a year ago and they have this list ahead of them you actually i think you're one of those but you have the very specific niche you know what are you going to launch and why uh but a lot of sellers they're not really niching down their products they just have a list of products they want to launch so in something that probably was uh like making you confident to launch a year ago you won't be confident today because numbers changed and the situation changed. And comparing Amazon in the past and Amazon today, 
in 2024, it's different Amazon. So Amazon in the past uh, did not require a lot of performance. Amazon today is much smarter because we pretty much get rid out of the majority of the hijackers. We're reducing the appeals, so we're not wasting much time because we have the opportunity to trademark and copyright our products. And when people are saying, oh, Amazon is much harder, harder, no, it is not hard. It's actually much easier because you have instruments to leverage your success. And by validating your product and by targeting the market you already have, like, for example, if you've been building your email list in the past with the products you're already selling, it is super easy, especially if you have the D2C website, it's super easy to retarget your audience to the product you are going to launch. So now let's think who are your buyers? Like what is this list about? What this do this piece of people are purchasing? So for example, if you're selling wedding products or you're selling home decorations, what these people are purchasing on top of those products? Because it's not just like wedding decorations they purchased once, home decor they're by purchasing probably on a daily basis. What else? Are they top 25? Are they top 50? Are they top 10? Are they top 5? Are they top 1? So now let's narrow down on your audience and discover what else would they purchase from you, especially given that they had a good experience with your products. And the moment we're learning this audience, we can already find out tons of idea where we're supposed to look at. So for example, if they've been purchasing wedding decorations, what's the chance that they're already having babies? If they're having babies, what's the chance they're real American family and they're having golden retriever? And if not, it's a golden retriever. Let's see who else might be there. Yeah. So where they where they might be living? Maybe they're using winter products. Maybe they're not. If they're using winter products, then probably they need some stuff in their garage to protect their car, uh, their garage from the dirt when they're coming back, if they're living in a winter state and etc. So you just have to understand the audience and find the product that you are going to sell to them. Then the moment you find out they're, uh, they're like, let's say, let's say top 10 of interest. Now you have to think what kind of products you can sell them at the high price. Because here's what's happening. Amazon and where, because we're analyzing a lot of products, lately I noticed that when I'm using Smart Scout, I hope it's okay to mention, right? So sure. no restrictions, yeah. So when I'm using Smart Scout and I'm looking at the AdSpy, sometimes I confuse them like why I don't see big spend for PPC. And when you have like $600 spent and $100,000 in sales, it doesn't mean this is all your budget. It does mean you have to go to Google, put their brand name, product name, and see where they're indexed. And how likely you will find out the recommendation from any type of blogger on TikTok, YouTube, or whatever, any other blog. So if they are doing external traffic, find out if it's paid traffic or if it's not. And if this traffic is permanent, then how likely you will be able to uh, use the same path and sell these high ticket products on Amazon without spending so much money on PPC. On top, even if you will be doing a lot of PPC, PPC campaigns for the high ticket product are much is much cheaper. And I can explain it like some of the products, we're not talking about iPhones and iPads, so we're not talking about these high saturated ones, right? But if, for example, we've recently been doing the case study for the Murphy bed, and the Murphy bed cost as minimum is $900 to $1,000. Landed in United States, very well customized one can be $400 to $500. When you're selling it on Amazon, you're still like after all fees and everything, you're still having a pocket as minimum as two, three hundred dollars after expenses. Based on the analytics of Amazon PPC campaigns, you're paying for this product uh, about 0 0.4, 0 0.9 per click. Given the low purchase rate, so people can find what they're searching for on Amazon, where the conversion rate, if you will look at the Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer, you will find out that it's just like under one percent. You have a huge pro, you have a huge opportunity to 
customize this product the way how people are searching for, which is you can do with Sholox or Data Dive. Like you can have all the CI insights and they scrape all the reviews, like thousands of reviews within like a couple of minutes. So, and then by selling this product via PPC, you're winning because even if your con- it costs, uh, even I'm sorry, if you, even if your conversion rate will be, let's say, uh, I don't know, 10%, how much you're paying like ten dollars per sale and you're keeping in the pocket two three hundred huh it's free and if on top you're using um influencers or blogs or external traffic then you're pretty much not spending anything because it's long term these links are being posted you just have to keep updating uh the traffic on your uh, on your listing and how much of these units you're supposed to sell per month a hundred to have a hundred grand hundred units to three units a day four Three, four units a day, you're making 100 grand in revenue, which is 20, 30,000 uh, in a pocket just by selling high ticket. Is it heavy? Yeah. Are you paying for shipping? Yeah. You're not the one who is carrying this stuff, which means it's super simple and easy. Uh, just finding the products where nobody wants to go on Amazon and sell because it's a higher investment in the, initially. So you're paying upfront. Uh, into the you're investing into the inventory instead of investing tons of thousands of dollars into the marketing. So on this approach, I would recommend uh, the majority of the sellers to take by taking their audience that is already out there, analyze their uh, interest, find the high ticket product for this audience, make sure there is not a lot of competitors that are selling uh, the product that is converting because sometimes you can have a lot of competitors selling the same stuff but people are not purchasing. Are they making sales? Yes, but they're making sales because people have to buy their product, not because they want to buy their product. So I hope it does make sense. I love that. No, it it makes a lot of sense. And I'm really curious to dive into, you know, you talk a lot about people need to be a little bit more detail oriented and make sure they actually understand the analytics that sit behind, you know, a new product launch, right? You talked about conversion rate, how much am I estimating towards ads and my bid percentage and all of that? So Isabella, my question would be this. What are those variables that you are measuring before you get into actually moving forward with the product? Like what metrics are you using to validate that a product will be successful before you have even launched it? So we have uh, like surface look and deep look, right? So when you're like, out of glance, we have to have, of course, demand. And believe it or not, we still have people coming, big sellers as well. I want to sell. I have an idea to sell. Man, this I mean, idea doesn't have a demand. If you're ready to create a demand, cool. But it's a different story. So let's agree that we have a demand. And let's agree that we have enough of competition where this competition first did not create the market. The great example is iPhone and any type of the smartphone. So the market is being created by three major brands, some Android, any type of Android, Google, Pixel, right? It's also Android and iOS, right? So we're not going to this market unless we're Jeff Bezos. So uh, we're uh, choosing the market where there is not, uh, I'm always providing this example Like imagine you are going to the farmer's market and there is like three rows of people that are selling tomatoes. So the definition of the Me Too product is the variation of tomatoes. So if you are going at the very end of the line and you want to sell tomatoes, you are not doing it. So because it's super hard to pitch people, listen, I have tomatoes. I am also here. I'm selling them and I'm ready to pay you to purchase from me this tomatoes. So let's not exhaust ourselves with that. And one of the Me Too products, like really yesterday's example from one of potential clients, uh, tic-tac-toe uh, paper holder, uh, toilet paper holder. So if you will look at the products, no matter how you will customize this, it's still tic-tac-toe paper holder. And people are buying like really because one of them will be looking a little bit better. And no matter how much you will put efforts into like assembling and quality, people just trying to buy it's cheap and look good, right? So we're not going to this Me Too product. So let's say we see the demand. We're seeing the... uh, 
results on the page one and two and three where people are really selling different type of products. Like they are different from each other, all of them. So for example, if you will search for serving tray, it's not a very expensive product, but if you look at the serving tray, you will find the variety of them. So this, this is one of the signs for you that like, oh, let me see how can I differentiate this product? Because if you will put out there another serving tray, you definitely will be able to sell this one as long as you read the mind of your target audience. Now, we have to narrow down what kind of the serving trays are out there. You'll be surprised. Some of them are for people that can't walk and people are using them like uh, on the bed. So like you have to be able to clip and clip them uh, like coffee the coffee trays and etc so you are you have to ne- you have to be able to narrow down the vague keyword to the smaller keyword and if you have this opportunity then you do that and to let you understand the example so let's say you're shopping for the chief or kitchen knife right how many other keywords that are having high demand are out there for the kitchen knife and and chief knife Trust me, it's just two or three, which means even you will be able to differentiate this product, the amount of the keywords you can target is just a few. And unless you're selling this chief knife for $1,200, your spent on PPC will be insane. So we're not choosing the key, the products with a like small amount of the keywords. We're really chasing down the huge semantic core where you will have an opportunity to have like three, four uh, medium search volume keywords, medium search volume keywords for like several, for like, okay, niche is like three, 4,000 searches a month that are evergreen. So even you have a spike or sometimes drop down during the year, on average, you still have to have like 40, 30 to 50,000 searches a year per keyword. If you have at least five to seven of those and you have five to seven uh, high search volume keywords, and then you have a lot of keywords under 1,000 and all of them are relevant, that's a green light to keep analyzing. It is not the green light that, yes, I'm doing it. It is the green light to keep analyzing. Awesome. So yeah. just to sum that up real quick, and then I yeah. want to hear and I want to go into the deep dive of all yeah. of it. Tell, you can cut me at any point because I'm pretty passionate about all this analytics. No, I love this. All right. So to begin with, you need to focus on like a product that has demand. And I guess my question for this, Isabella, would be like, how do you assess demand? Is it like search volume for the keywords then in total? And is there like a threshold that you want to see to begin with? So here's, we have to uh, determine the budget of the person that they're ready to invest into the product. Because if we are having, for example, demand of 1 million a year, then we have to take a look at Amazon product opportunity. And I will get there in a little bit. Uh, We have to make sure we have a good proportion in between demand and people that are coming uh, yearly on the market and how many of them are being successful. So I would say I would look into the, if it, if we have evergreen 100K a year with all other um, components that were hitting like green, that's a good thing. Because okay. if one of the keywords is stable with 100K searches a year, it's a really good one as long as we have other keywords as well. That can so, support it. Yeah. yeah. So if we have one million, like we've been able to find several products that are having million searches a year and just like few, few sellers on the market. But it's more exception than a rule. Yeah. So because we're conveying this podcast for everybody, I want people to follow rules and not chasing the exceptions. Awesome. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So... To sum everything up, the to first validate a product at a high level to see if you have the green light to deep dive even further is first you need to identify a market that has at least a hundred thousand searches for that particular product in a given year. Okay. And those keywords that make up those one hundred thousand searches per year need to be, you know, you need to probably have at least 10 or more 
keywords that lead into that 100,000 in aggregate search volume. Then component number two that she talked about is you want to see that there's a lot of differentiation, right? They're not when somebody searches for serving tray in her example, are all of the serving trays being served up on page number one? Do they all look the exact same or are there a lot of different kind of variations or designs for those serving trays? If you see a lot of different variations, then that's a really good indication that, okay, there's room for disruption in this market. Whereas on the other hand, if they all look the same, that would be a cautionary red light to say, hey, you're just going to have to come out with another Me Too product. And, you know, then it's just a race to the bottom in terms of price. And then third, last but not least, you want to make sure that there are more keywords than just one or two or three big kind of like broad search terms, such as, you know, serving trays, right? That's a very broad search term. You want to be able to see, you know, serving trays for bed and breakfast or serving trays for, you know, handicap or whatever, or after surgery, whatever it is, right? You want to be able to see like there's three to 4,000 searches per month on these other kind of long tail keywords that have, you know, a different look and feel to them for those uh, different styles or designs of those products. So those are your first three qualifiers to get you into the door that says, okay, this product opportunity looks interesting. So Isabel, is that correct? And if so, let's then dive into the deep. And it is correct. I just want to specify about the MeToo product. So, for example, sometimes you can um, find the product that l- seems to you as a MeToo, and, uh, but the keyword is still vague. So that probably might be an opportunity to create something that you will be able to differentiate yourself. But like, as I said, an example, tic-tac-toe, you will not be able to name this product differently. It's still tic-tac-toe paper towel uh, or like uh, toilet paper holder. It's just, you can't name it differently. It's just as it is. So this is me too. So when this relevancy uh, is matching as it is, then you don't want to be this another one that is selling tomatoes. Awesome. All right. So if we've passed those first qualifications, then how do we validate into the deep dive? Into the deep dive. Now, so we are going to Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer. So before that, we've been using, um, well, pretty much anything you use, like you can use Smart Scout, you can use Helium Hel- Hel- 10. This is what we use. We use five, six software now. Uh, we're uh, looking at the seller tools on the page one when it's like we need to, we don't want to go into Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer because it's like it takes a lot of steps. Uh, but seller tools provides us all this first insight so it's very user friendly and I don't know any other software that does it so and then we're going to Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer and here's interesting part so Amazon is not really user friendly when we're talking about their analytics tool and I'm sure they will get there it just takes time Amazon is a platform is a marketplace on the first place and they are creating all this social media and uh, tools on the second, I mean, like 10th place, right? So it's not the main priority for them. It's my light going back and forth here. It depends on the action. <laughs> if I'm waving, then my light will be on. So, and what is happening there? Uh, when you put into the search bar on Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer the keyword, if you don't have this drop down menu, so Amazon is not suggesting you the, this keyword you're putting out there, uh, it's useless to keep looking for this keyword because Amazon uh, just doesn't have it in the data. So you have to make sure you're analyzing keyword, the product based on their correct keyword. So let's say the keyword is correct, then Amazon shows you the need and the keyword. And I want you to pay attention here because the need might be the serving tray, but the keywords that people are searching for can be gold, blue, navy blue, for handicaps, for whatever, like tons of others. So pay attention there. And Amazon will have a list for you for some of the products. For some of the products, it's just one line. And then you'll be able to see the other opportunities for this product that on the left side, you will, uh, it will be like people's need, like pain point. And on the right side, you'll be able to see the uh, actual search terms. 
Then, important part, we're going to the search terms, and it's like next tab, uh, you'll be able to see it. And on the search terms, you will be able to see the purchase rate. And here is something that it, it's, it's great that we have seven and eight figure sellers listening because they will understand. I don't have to explain it a lot. So you will have the numbers of the conversion rate and you will have you will be able to see the products. So pay attention there. It's based on the specific keyword. Amazon shows you the specific products that are winning based on Amazon algorithm. This specific keyword and Amazon shows you the conversion rate for the specific keyword for the, based on the specific um, uh, ASIN. So it doesn't mean that all other products out there are having the same conversion rate. It means that the product Amazon chose to show you out there, how likely this product, by the way, is Amazon choice. This product is having this conversion rate. So if this conversion rate is below 1% and you have a variety of different products that Amazon listing for the different type of the keywords and all these keywords are relevant to the product you are analyzing, it's another green light for you to keep analyzing this product. Because now, if the purchase rate slash conversion rate is low, it does mean people are not finding what they're actually looking for, which means we have an opportunity to develop something that people actually searching for. So in this case, here is, here is the room to go on Amazon and sell something that your audience is searching. And then when you read this, please, don't just go to the next page because this page will take you, I would say, good 30 minutes if you do it correctly. And then you have another part, which is insights. And the insights, sometimes I'm going there first. You will be able to see how many new sellers are on Amazon for the past 360 days, a year ago, 12 months ago, and as of today. So this line is important because now you have on top of Amazon, you have a number of the searches a year, and then you'll be able to see how many sellers, how many not sellers, how many new listings are coming on Amazon. It's, it's very important to uh, understand the difference in between new listings and new sellers because established sellers can create the new listing and the new seller can come into the Amazon and sell this product. So we're talking about new listings and Amazon is not indicating at least yet, is it the new seller or it's established seller? But you still have to understand this difference. So, and if you are able to see the very good proportion, so for example, for the past a year ago, you got into this niche, let's say 10 new sellers and today 10 new sellers, then this niche is not like trending or going as crazy, like um, uh, growing as crazy. This niche is stable and you have the stable amount of sellers coming, listings coming every year. But then the next line, you will be able to see how many successful sellers, how many successful listings were in this niche. And then here where you have to create the puzzle for yourself and put this puzzle together. Because what's happening there you have to read for yourself the proportion in between the demand, in between new sellers and new listings and successful listings. And if all this does make sense, then it's pretty much very close to the green light if the uh, previous numbers and pre previous indications for you work to actually look into the insights of the listing, inside of the, pro inside of the products, and find out if you can customize this product and make it better. But before I will dive there, I want you to stay here because sometimes, for example, the demand for the product is 1 million and it's 22 new, new listings and five of them are successful. Read to yourself if this proportion makes sense because it's million of the demand, but it's just 22. It's like what is 22 new listings if the demand is a million, right? And it's a relevant demand. But if it's only five successful, why it's only five? Is it the product so hard to customize? Is it the audience that doesn't want to purchase? Is it the seller that don't understand the audience? Like what it is here, you have to find the reason. And if a year ago, this product had, let's say, 100,000 demand, 
and today it's a million and a year ago it was let's say 10 sellers 10 new listings and this year it's 30 and there here is like still we don't have a lot of successful ones also find what is going on because if it's a growing niche will this niche be stopping the sales at some point or it will stabilize like we don't want another fidget spinner launching on amazon right so we want something that people will be like will keep purchasing for a long term like for example peptides right that doesn't mean guys you have to go and sell it some of them are selling it like i uh i see it's like very trendy and uh high likely this this like peptides will be stabilized in the niche for a long term because it's it's a pretty much new ecosystem peptides so now everybody eating peptides put on their face peptides so it's growing it's crazy people that are joining this niche right now they will make a lot of money but then it will slow down after everybody will test it out after everybody will try it and then it will be just evergreen niche because it will be just living there for a long long term i don't know forever or not but for a long term so uh this is like the next step and i, I love can, it yeah is it complicated or like I, yeah I no it. i i think i followed it so to sum everything up once we've kind of met the initial qualifications or the requirements that say hey there's market demand there's some differentiation in the market here and there's a lot of long tail keywords that can support our overall search volume that's your first green light and then secondly what you need to do to further validate your product is to go to amazon opportunity explorer and ideally what you want to see is when you start to type in that main keyword you want to see that amazon starts to auto populate a bunch of different other search terms that are related or that at least start with that same phrase right and you just start to see a long list that's another good sign that there's a lot of keywords there's a lot of room for opportunity in this particular product category then what you're going to want to do is type in that search term and then amazon is going to show you the top three asins that are being purchased for that search term and isabella you mentioned like if you can find some of those products that have a less than one percent conversion rate yet amazon is still saying that is still one of the most purchased products that's a really good sign that like the needs are not being met and so people are probably just settling with something that they don't really want but it's the best that's out there currently which means there's room for you to innovate and bring something new to the market that may meet the demand a little bit better. And yeah. then last but not least, you talked about looking into the seller metrics, right? Or the seller insights that are inside there to be able to understand, you know, how many new sellers are coming into that market and how successful are they being? Um, so Isabel, I think that is a great like high level overview for people to really consider before they jump into a product, because we know how much capital people will tie up when they launch new products. And the more accurate you can be in first understanding and validating how successful a product will be, um, that you have you know, 75% success rates when you launch products, that can be a game changer for your business to where it's no longer a guessing game. You're going in with your eyes wide open, knowing exactly how you're going to be differentiated in the market and how you're going to appeal to those customers. So I think this is super valuable. Um, Isabella, is there anything else that you want to add that I didn't mention here? You mentioned everything great. I would just add one more piece. Uh, so after, let's say you validated everything and you feel everything is great and amazing. Now move to the step where you will find the opportunity to actually customize the product slash differentiate it. Don't hesitate. And you can do it via Sholex or Datadive. Both of them are having those insights. I like Sholex uh, uh, representation of the product, especially if you don't like to read data better. But Datadive is, Datadive is providing a little bit different insights, but just read both. <laughs> Look at both and find the opportunity for yourself how you can make this product better. And on top, one uh, tip for you guys, um, use mid journey so after this is something i am teaching our people to do is uh take the summary of uh people's insights 
and type into the mid journey by saying like you you know most of you uh, you guys know that the slash imagine it's a command and then you are saying as long as you are not uh, using any words because mid journey does not understand words yet so they're not creating products with the copywriting on it and you are saying please create uh for example serving tray with uh gray gold whatever color uh having this type of handles uh this type of shape uh and like whatever insights you will find out there and ask midjourney to create this product for you it will take midjourney probably 7 to 15 seconds sometimes 30 to create this product and when you have these four different variations go on pickfu uh choose prior your main competitor uh test this product against the main competitor and if Midjourney won then from there you are giving the task to your designer graphic designer or industrial designer whatever designer you're working with for this specific product and then this designer already adapting this product for the manufacturer and you can start talking to the manufacturer so yeah i'm done <laughs> i love that well i think that is so so important is you mentioned there that it's to, in order to differentiate the product, first read the reviews, right? Read the reviews, get a summary, use your resources, chat GPT, Shulix, um, data dive to understand the context of those reviews. And maybe there's a gap in the market and identify like what is lacking? What are people complaining about? Then take those things and those ideas and use Dolly or Midjourney to come up with new ideas for yourself. You don't have to be the one who creates it on your own. Utilize those AI tools. There's so many of them out there now that can present some new ideas to you and then use one of the many uh, testing softwares out there. Um, PickFu's is a great one and let people choose which one do you, what image do you prefer that you would click on to learn more about or purchase and why? And then again, read those reviews and continue to iterate time and time again until you get something that is like a clear winner in a landslide that people are like, oh, this is amazing, right? That's when you can be a little bit more confident, then start working with your manufacturer to produce that. So this has been amazing, Isabella. I think like this is drinking from a fire hose of information <laughs> for launching new products, but I do love to leave our audience with three actionable takeaways from each episode. So here are the three actionable takeaways that I noted, Isabella. You let me know if I'm missing anything here. So action item number one is if you're a seven figure brand and you want to scale to eight figures and beyond, your number one growth lever is launching new products and expanding your product line. And so cementing that as one of your biggest priorities in your business, you should always be focused on. And if it's not you, you should have a team member that is solely focused on looking for new product ideas. Currently for our brand, we know what products we're going to launch for the next two years. That's how long of a product pipeline we have, because I know it is our biggest growth lever. And so it is super important for you to make sure you similarly have a two year roadmap of what products you should be launching because somebody can go in and do that data analysis. So that would be my action item. Number one is if you're not currently doing this yourself, hire a team member that is their full time job to go and validate new product ideas and add them to a potential product um, pipeline for the future. Action item. You like that, Isabella? I do like that. And you asked me about this in the beginning and I, I wanted to it and I forgot to it. Like, yeah, you have to launch at least one product a month to keep growing where like Amazon algorithm understands that you are the serious seller. Because if you're launching one product a year and then you're probably not launching for another year. So it's two years and Amazon is not giving you a biggest advantage because other people are other sellers that are launching more products consistently and in a business speed is pretty much everything. So you have to be actionable and showing Amazon, like, listen, this is more, this is more, this is more. Because Amazon is your partner. So if you're not making more money to Amazon, I will, Amazon will not consider you as a serious partner. So keep in mind this thing too. Yeah. And we had Matt Altman on the podcast and he even said he believes that there is something in Amazon's, you know, A9 algorithm 
that gives you a benefit if they see that when was the last time you launched a new product, a new to Amazon ASIN. He believes that there's something where you get a little bit extra love from Amazon if you're continuing to bring new things to their marketplace. And I, I like the theory as well. I tend to agree. Yeah, me too. Action item number two, you need to not just think about a product that sounds fun or that you're super passionate about. You need to actually launch products that have been validated by data. And so that would be my recommendation. If right now your validation process is just launching products that you think are fun or interesting to do or what other brands are doing, um, it's going you're fighting an uphill battle. Instead, what I would recommend is we spent 40 minutes diving into the intimate details of analytics that you should be measuring. I would make sure that, you know, you probably have some type of validation process in your business now. I would recommend you take some of the golden nuggets that you got from today's episode and adjust your process just a little bit, right? If it's, hey, I I never really considered like the differentiation factor, right? Or the number of keywords that make up that demand. Adjust your process and tweak it because 1% improvements will ultimately help you get better at launching more products more successfully overall. And then third, last but not least, but I would argue this is probably one of the most important ones. You have to differentiate your product. And Isabella, you gave us such a really good like I, strategy for how to differentiate the product, right? Go read the reviews, utilize AI to interpret the reviews. And then go utilize AI tools such as Midjourney, Dolly to say, hey, here's a product I want to create. Here's the feedback we're getting from the customers or negative feedback. How do we create a product that better meets the needs of these customers and see what AI spits out, right? It may not be perfect at first. You might need to do a couple iterations, um, but then take those, test them on PickFu and ultimately just get better and better at testing these ideas. And once you see that something like consistently is working better and even being voted um, as something that people would be willing to purchase over the competition because you can run those type of polls in PickFu, that's when you can be 10 times, 100 times more confident in your product launches. But long gone are the days of Me Too products. Um, If that's your strategy... I'm sorry, but you're going to get your butt whooped on Amazon. Um, People are innovating and that's what, you know, that's what the market wants. They want innovative products. They don't want me to products. And you'll find that the innovators are the ones that win at the end of the day. So Isabella, is there anything else that we haven't mentioned? Yeah, don't be scared of the high ticket products. Yeah, don't be scared of the high, don't be scared of the high ticket products. That's a I like that as well. I I do agree that most sellers are not playing in the high ticket space. I love that you talked about the Murphy beds, you know, thousand dollar ticket items. You know, most people aren't playing in that space, which means you've got low CPCs. You know, you need to figure out your funding a little bit. Um, That's probably your biggest challenge. But then after that, it's a blue ocean for the most part. It is. It is. I was doing a case study the other day, but we can talk about it next time. But yeah, it, it, it is great. It's guys free idea for a lot of you. Even if hundreds of people will launch right now, Murphy, but trust me, it's plenty of space for this niche out there. I love it. So Isabel is also giving you a product idea. Like she's already validated this. This is a good product opportunity to move yeah. into. If you want to get into some high ticket items, Murphy beds is where it's at. Yeah, a lot of people will laugh on it. I'm laughing too, but come on, it's a lot of money. <laughs> I love it. This is amazing. Isabella, I love to leave, um, you know, I love to ask the following three questions to each guest. So we're going to start and we haven't prepared you for these. So you're going to have to answer from the top of your head. Number one, what's been the most influential book that you've read and why? Damn, I knew you were going to ask me that. So um, we, as an entrepreneur, we're challenging ourselves all the time, right? So, and everybody is reading right now Alex Hormozzi. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of things out there are pretty common. And I can tell, damn, I knew that. But implementation of a lot of things, a $100 million offer is like, it's really worth it. And it's challenging for me. And another book that is next to him is uh, One to Many, Jason Flatlin. And I know Jason Flatlin in person. He is a great guy, so smart. 
when like I'm next to him, I feel myself super stupid. However, implementation of both of those tactics uh, will help any type of business grow. It doesn't matter if you're in the info business space, if you're in the product space, in your manufacturer space, but especially Jason Flatland ones, one is like really challenging for me. I love it. Those are both, uh, I highly recommend both of those books and both are fantastic entrepreneurs to be following. So yeah, love those recommendations. Question number two, Isabella, what is a new productivity tool or software tool that you've recently discovered that you think is a game changer? Oh, damn. I would want to name you one, but here is what is going on right now is the era of the AI. None of the AIs is perfect yet. However, if you learn how to build the relationships in between several AIs, and in my case, because we're talking about product uh, research and development, is Sholex, Data Dive, Smart Scout. Those are like those are pretty good ones. Like we are talking about the new software. Of course, we have uh, grandparents such as Helium 10 and Seller Tools. Uh, <laughs> however, when we're talking about the new ones, the like Smart Scout is just crushing right now. There, uh, when you look at the insights and at the data they are reading from Amazon directly because they have access to the data lake, it's just insane like you can spend hours by exploring new stuff and like your mind will be blown away and with the combination of shulix and the insights there from like when they're reading their reviews scraping their reviews at this like 2000 3000 15000 reviews within like 3 minutes or 15 minutes maximum uh combination of both is like really changing your perspective on the launching the products I love that. Those are three great tools uh, that she recommended. Smart Scout, Data Dive, and Shulix. So definitely go check those out. All right. Last but not least, Isabella, who is somebody that you admire or respect the most in the e-commerce space that other people should be following and why? Well, of course you. (laughs) Uh, However, people already following you. Um, We already mentioned Hermosi and oh, you know what? Uh, If you're not If you're not following Josh Hadley, if you're not following his wife, if you're not following Kevin King, Bradley, uh, Hormoz, and Fladlin, uh, please check out Perry Belcher. Perry Belcher is a mind-blowing guy. He's so much fun. He's really crazy with ideas, and he's so humble and chill in it. I personally respect humble people, especially when they're rich and humble. So Perry Belcher. Yeah. Yeah. I I know Perry Belcher as well. We were in his mastermind group and he does. He has a lot of wild ideas, but fantastic marketing and sales funnels. Um, He is a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. hundred percent. Isabel, this has been amazing. I know you have a special offer for our audience and where can people learn more about you? Claim this offer. Tell us more. Uh, I believe we have a link under this podcast so you guys can click and you will get the free uh, analytics of like one of your listings or if you have any any idea that you want us to validate, uh, let us know. We will do it for you and we'll let you know if this idea you're supposed to go with on Amazon or probably we will trash it out, which is 99 out of 100. All right. So we'll have the the link in the show notes. Um, And so, yes, I would highly recommend take Isabella up on this offer. If you're considering launching a product, run it by her for free. She'll give you some insights and give you some warning signs if she sees them or if it's uh, the green light, um, she'll let you know that as well. Um, Yeah. And if it's no, no, we will also tell you that it's a no, no. That's fantastic. (laughs) Isabella. Thank you so much for your time today. This was awesome having you on the show. And thank you so much. We'll have to have you on again. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for listening. Visit ecombreakthrough.com for more information. If you've enjoyed today's episode, the best way you can show your appreciation is by clicking the subscribe button and quickly leaving a review. See you again next time.